Who's he going to have on now this week? Huh? Pat's personality portraits. I always tell you, the plot line is simply this. Fascinating people who do fascinating things. Some of them you know, some of them you don't know. You certainly know this guy's name, though, because if you have ever gone to a movie, a theater, anywhere in the state of Arizona, it probably says Harkins on it. This is Dan Harkins. Hey, and you. grew up in the, in the movie business. That, that's yep. what's exciting uh, for me, the whole idea that you followed Red's path of success. That's right. My, my dad, uh, at age 16, lived in Cincinnati, ran away from home, uh, jumped on his motorcycle, and wanted to go to Hollywood, find his fame and fortune. Along the way, he ran out of gas in Flagstaff, so he decided, oh, I'll stay here. It seems nice. It was probably August or September, so he didn't know it snowed there quite yet. And went to college at Flagstaff for a year or two, became a disc jockey in a local radio station. And you know where that leads to. And then he went, came down to Tempe, ASU, and at age 18, he decided to reopen the theater on Mill Avenue, just off Mill Avenue, called the State Theater. And that was the birth of Harkins Theaters in 1933. And I believe the birth of Dan. Well, later on, he built the theater around the corner, which is today called the Valley Art. Yes. Back then, it was called the College Theater. And he and my mom lived in this little bijou apartment next to the projection. I mean, it was small. I mean, it was about, it's smaller than the set. I think that their bedroom would be what's called a walk-in closet today. And they lived there until my mom was about eight months pregnant with me. And she said to my dad, you know, honey, shouldn't we maybe raise our, our future baby in a home, not in the projection booth of a movie theater? So my dad said, okay, and they moved into a home. So I was, I was conceived in that movie. Oh, yeah. How many screens have Harkins on them? 430 screens. We're in five states, 30 locations. Um, box office-wise, we're number six in the country. Screen count, we're number 10. As an independently owned theater chain, we're number one. So some of them are making money. Some are, yeah. All right, but yeah. in this period of time, that's not a frivolous question. Right. Why, why would I go out of my house with a big screen TV, and an awful lot of people now mm -hmm. have big screen TVs. Oh, sure. This is not exclusive. Right. Big stereo systems, mm -hmm. and I got all these channels and all of these movies that I can get on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Why would I come to your place? And you know what's weird is that we're just experiencing the best year we ever had. And wow. in this month, movie going is up 20% compared to last year. Why? Um, because of one simple thing. No matter how well you have a home movie theater with a big screen and the six channels of sound, all of that put together, the fidelity and the picture and the presentation will match the technology we have in a Harkins theater. But most important of all is that tribunal experience. It happened to me. I watched Blazing Saddles in the movie theaters when it came out in 1974 and laughed. I, la I fell in the aisle laughing. When I got a Betamax machine in 1980, the first thing I rented was Blazing Saddles. My sister and I plug it in and we're watching it and we go, you know, isn't that funny? And then I brought it back as part of a Warner Brothers revival at Camelview in the mid-90s. And I watched it with an audience again, and it was very funny. And the same so, is true of horror films, too. Right, horror They're films. They're not as scary at home as they are in the theater. No, in fact, even dramas, everything, there's something about mankind. We like to share that experience with fellow man in an auditorium and laugh and cry and scream and applaud with everybody else. And when you're home alone, it's just not the same experience. Yeah, but don't you make most of your profits, you and all the other exhibitors, off of refreshments? That's true. Yeah, in fact, if someone says to you, Pat, I'm going to open a movie theater, what would you like to do, run the snack bar or the box office? Take the snack bar, the profitability of the snack bar. So in reality, we're really peddlers of popcorn and soft drinks, but in the case of Harkins, we have a gourmet line that goes up to 160 items. Smooth, smooth, how you got in, <laughs> got it. how the Harkins yeah. refreshment stand is different. Yeah. Not just raisinets and goobers and no. zagnuts, right? Right, right. We have egg rolls and we have... You know, we have, you know, the special chocolate-covered uh, goji berries, you name it, whatever you want. We have um, more items than anybody else, and it's all, some of it's uh, good for you, like juices, and, and believe it or not, when I brought in bottled water in my theaters in 1978, people laughed at me. <laughs> go, oh my God, Harkins, you can go to the drinking fountain and get it for free. And I go, but folks want good bottled water, and we even had sparkling water, the first to do that. To How do you it. choose the films, though? Real easy. Um, the most important thing in a motion picture is the story. Does it tell a good story? Do you care about the character? But is there a guy in Hollywood that writes the story and says, okay, send this over to the Harkins Theater chain and see if they'll buy it? No, usually there's a guy writing a story, and they say, send it over to Warner Brothers or Fox and see if they'll buy it, and then distribute it to Harkins and all the big theater chains, and then go on to home video and et cetera. Yeah, but if Warner says to you, we really believe in this, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to like it. That's true. 
but usually we do. We're a firm believer in kind of First Amendment rights where we show everything we can. We, we don't show, um, you know, adult entertainment, but we show family entertainment as much as we can. And uh, it's up to the audience. Truly, the audience votes at the box office. If you go to see a movie this weekend, like you go see The Artist or, or one of the Oscar, uh, can, you know, Oscar nominee, nominated films, and on Monday morning, the vote, there's enough votes in, we hold it over. It's really like a, an election every weekend. Okay, finally, though, in this rapid-fire interview, everybody wants to know. You're yeah. the guy in charge. You're the guy with your name on those theaters. That's true. How much do you really adhere to the rating system? Oh, we do. Oh, we definitely do. If um, it says R, and if it says you're not supposed to come in, anybody younger than this age right. without a parent accompanying yeah. or an adult, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say, come on, the theaters don't pay any attention. Yeah, we do. You know what happens is um, we even send out people that are under 17 and ask them to try to sneak into my own theaters for an R-rated movie. And if there's a problem, we catch it right there. And not only do we do that, but some government agencies do it too. And Harkins always shines. Now, we may not catch everybody. No, I you know, know it's true because I'm stopped constantly <laughs> because people are deeply concerned that because of my appearance. Yeah, that's uh, right. You look that, like you're are you 17 years old or not? Yeah. And uh, look, Dan Harkins, Harkins Theaters, another one of Pat's personality portraits on KTAR.com.